They built the perfect ballpark. The huge crowd arrived. The president of the United States. The weather was perfect. We love this place. It was all set that I was going to pitch opening day at Camden Yard. Rick Sutcliffe, this is eighth opening day assignment. I got to go back a little bit and talk about how it all came about. In 1979, when I was fortunate to be the rookie of the year, a big part of that was my catcher. For the most part, was a guy named Johnny Oates. When I got traded to the Chicago Cubs in 84, the bullpen catcher for the Chicago Cubs was again, Johnny Oates. Uh, I didn't go on a scouting report in 84 that the Cubs had. I went on what Johnny told me. And as a lot of people know, I, I went on to to win the Cy Young Award. And all of a sudden, in 1992, the Cubs didn't want me. I'd come off of shoulder surgery. I get a call from none other than Johnny Oates. He's the manager of the Baltimore Orioles. He said, I need you to come to Baltimore. I want to meet with you. Well, I was happy to go there. I flew in with my agent. and I knew what he was going to talk about. I was at the end of my career. I, I really didn't need to be going to the American League East where the designated hitter was there. Um, I was older. It just didn't seem like the right fit. But as we get to the ballpark, Johnny leaves Larry Ducchino and everybody else, my agent back, and he walks me out to the mound at Camden Yard. And he said, I want you to look around. And I'm looking around and I'm seeing how beautiful it is. I'm seeing a lot of things that remind you of, of Fenway and, and Wrigley and, and a lot of the great stadiums of, of, of baseball history. And Johnny goes, you're gonna throw the first pitch ever in this ballpark. So he goes, you know this place is gonna be packed. And you know the people in the seats here know the game of baseball. You're going to love it. The goosebumps that I got like, determined to me that I knew what I was going to do. I didn't know what kind of a year I was going to have, but I knew in 1992 I, I was going to be a Baltimore Oriole. The 1992 season is now officially underway. That was kind of the deciding factor. Chris Hoyles. Here comes the 1-0 delivery. Hoyle swings and he sends it to left center field. The ball headed for the open spaces. Lofton, he dives. He can't get it. It lands on the warning track and then bounces over the wall. Orioles ahead, one to nothing. Yeah, Billy Ripken with the, the sacrifice bump. Here's the pitch, a squeeze. It's bunted. It's a beauty. They've done it. Billy has done it. And on the suicide, the Orioles have taken a two to nothing lead. We always talk about the Oriole way when you talk about Baltimore. And a lot of that came from Earl Weaver and it came from Cal Ripken Sr. But one thing I remembered about Baltimore that was different, we took infield every single night. And I asked Johnny Oates one time, I go, why are we doing this? He goes, because Cal insists on it. And as I thought about it, I don't know why in this day and age, people don't take infield. You know, everybody takes batting practice and there's like an hour and a half where nothing goes on. Cal always felt like you had to stay in the flow. You had to build everything up towards being the best you could be at the time the game started. It's important as far as the team being together and get something out of that time. That team played outstanding defense. When you got Billy and Cal up the middle, you're gonna turn the double play when you get that ground ball. Our outfield defense was outstanding. It came to fruition on opening day. I was just going to fill the strike zone up with whatever I had that I could throw over at that certain time and just hope that our defense would come through uh, with the plays that we needed. What a day this has been. An historic occasion. Rick Sutcliffe, the veteran right-hander, trying to show the way for the Orioles. In the ninth inning, the Orioles a two to nothing lead. I knew when, when I went out there for the ninth inning, I, I knew what was going on. Just in case, Greg Olson warming up in the Oriole bullpen. I knew we had an outstanding closer. I knew if anybody got on base that that was going to be it. Uh, my goal was to keep that from happening. And the crowd at Oriole Park at Camden Yard on its feet. Sutcliffe, one out away. He's one strike away. Let me tell you a story, and this is true. I threw the clincher when the Cubs, they hadn't been to playoffs in 40 years. And as I took the mound for the ninth inning that day uh, in 1984, Jody Davis told me, he said, hey, that last out, the third out in the ninth inning, I want that ball on my glove. Well, I knew what he meant. I knew he wanted me to strike the last guy out. I had an 0-2 count that day on, believe it or not, Joe Orsola. He was with Pittsburgh then, 1984. I knew the umpire and I knew the crowd was into it. Jody Davis, my catcher, set up about that far outside. I hit his glove and before the ball hit the glove, the home plate umpire had his right arm in the air. 
Yeah, you know, he knew what the crowd wanted. He knew the importance of that game. Well, I flash back to what happened in 84 for that last pitch in 1992. I got Sorrento up there. He's got power. If anybody gets on, I'm out of the game. Greg Olson's in. I go, oh, let's see if I can go that far outside of home again <laughs> and get this thing over with. Sutcliffe peers in, says yes, into his motion. I don't remember the home plate umpire. Sorrento takes a cross right three. He went, I yeah. And we all went home happy. The Orioles have won it, and Sutcliffe has the shutout. Sutcliffe, what a performance. What a performance. Goes all the way. He gives up only five hits. It's Rick Sutcliffe's day here at Camden Yards. Well, it sure is. I don't know how you could have been any better than Sutcliffe today. Oriole Park at Camden Yards has been inaugurated 